ladies. How are Hello. you? Hello. We're good. Very good, thank you. You're looking in good form. You all look really relaxed. Is this because you've had time off? That's because we've had yeah. hair and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've had a little bit more time to ourselves. Now we've, you know, completed this part of the world tour. So we're taking things a little more easier. And is yeah. that, when have you started taking things easier from? What was the date you said? Whew. I think when we came home, you know, after the world tour, you know, we've been away working hard for a long, long time, so it's nice to come home and spend time with our families and boyfriends and friends. And, and sleep. sleep in our and own beds. And, <laughs> and chill, yeah. man. When you get spare time, do you just do the things that, you know, normal people do? You just sit in yeah. your houses yeah. and watch telly? No, yeah. I go dog training at the moment, actually. That's what I do, which for some people is normal, but for some people isn't. Uh -huh. She's but, a new Barbara Woodhouse. Yeah. Sit. sit and all that lot. Uh, we're big fans of um, supermarket shopping. Yeah, we love going to the cinema. Yeah, going yeah. down the pub. It's the same as anyone, really. So it's not true then that being famous excludes you from the rest of the world. No, no. no unless you unless you it's make some, yourself like that. I think. Sometimes it can a little bit, but you just like Emma said, you just got to break through that and you know do the normal things that you want to do. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's your choice. Yeah, I think because yeah. when you go out, you only have your fans coming up to you asking you for autographs. You know, if you stick a hat on, you, know, you get a few, and it's it's nice to be able to just sign. It's not like a big a problem. Big chore. You haven't had to go out in disguise or anything, no. yet? No. No. <laughs> That's really embarrassing, though, isn't it? If you get, if you get caught. caught, you know, like with a dodgy wig on or something. <laughs> Someone's bound to have a I camera. I wore one for six months. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, first of all, about your, your new single, Goodbye. Where and when did yeah. you record it and write it? Ooh, recorded well, it in Nashville. In Nashville, yeah. wasn't it? And it was actually a studio that Elvis Presley had recorded in. So it was quite and ambient, was wasn't and it? Harmony. Yeah. Oh, they did yeah. it there too. Yeah, so it was a pretty special place, actually. Well, we started writing it ages ago, didn't we, when we were doing the, the second album, Spice World, was when we first got the idea for Goodbye. And then we finished it off in Nashville mm -hmm. and recorded it. Did you always, when, when you first wrote it, think of it as being a Christmas single, a sort of interim single? Yeah. Yeah, it's got that Christmassy kind yeah, of sound, definitely. hasn't it? Yeah, we always like to do a great big you know, lush ballad for Christmas. I, th I think with Goodbye, it's, it's a song that everyone can relate to. It's mm. like, you know, we were talking about, and you always have to say goodbye to a friend, even if it's they're going off to uni or they're going travelling. Do you know what I mean? Everyone can relate to saying goodbye to a loved one or a friend. And you've had a lot of goodbyes, you've had to say, over the last few months. I mean, always travelling. Is it something that seems very close to your heart? Um, yeah. It is, I think, you know, it's, it's an emotion that everyone feels, you know. There can be a lot of sadness, you know, when saying goodbye to people. But, you know, then again, it can... More relief. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, more relief. God. <laughs> but it's like, you know, we like to see it as a goodbye to the past and hello to the future. Were you doing the song when you are on tour? No. So it's really... It was only completed new. when it's we were on tour. It's only completed in Nashville, yeah. Actually. Mm. So it's new. Um, the, the, the video intrigues me because it's almost quite sad. You've got these sort of like static figures that look like they're about to die. And, there's a happy and then ending. they come alive. Yeah, but they come alive. So there's see. always a happy ending. Tell me about making the video. It was Ooh, freezing. Freezing cold. I Two whole warm, days. Though, I, had, I think I had the biggest coat on. So yeah, I, was quite, was I was quite jammy. I was a bit warmer than, than they were. Yeah. Yeah, well, but it was, oh no, you, you two had silly shoes on, didn't you? Silly yeah. shoes, but it was two days, two whole days. We had wolves. Yeah, wolves. Trained mm. wolves with us. It's quite nice. Oh, it's quite good. Where did you film it? It was in a, it's a big old house. Um, it's quite an interesting story, actually. It used to belong to George Harrison, and he gave it to some monks or something. And it's up in Aylesbury, and it's a beautiful place. Beautiful. And it's for sale if you're interested. <laughs> it's only going to cost about, what was it, 11 million oh, to redo million the roof? To do yeah, the roof. 20 million to do 20 the roof. 20 million to do the roof. Two to buy it. So, <laughs> bit of spare change, you know. There's a sort of a, a, a glamorous feeling to that video that I think is it, it's much less girly and much more sort of grown up. Is that the sort of image, the way you're going now, do you think? I, th I think with us, I think, you know, it's natural for people to grow up a little bit, but I would say there's a, there's a kid in everybody and I think, you know, we'll never lose that. But obviously it's a natural progression of, of growing, I think. How do you feel about having the, the, the lead vocal bit on this one, Emma? Oh God! <laughs> Never, I've, yeah, actually, not even thought about that at all. But I think we always contri contribute in in our songs. It's not like you say, "I'll oh, lead on that" or anything like that. It just sort of happens. happens. Yeah. The 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 way in which the four of you work on on this single, it, because it's the first thing that people have heard recorded, the, just the four of you. Do you think there's a a new? Do you gel better maybe on record with just the four of you? I think it's stronger vocally with just the four of us. 
I think also we're happier. You know, we're, 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 I won't say happier, but we are really happy as a four-piece. Yeah, I yeah. think it was, it was quite strange, you know, when Joe decided to leave. Um, it was, a, you know, quite a, a tough time for us. It was just at the end of our European tour. And, you know, we didn't have long to get things together, but we've done it, and I think it's made us stronger. And, it, and it's always felt really comfortable, just the four of us. And it's quite strange now. It's hard to actually imagine it ever being part of the band. You know, we've got loads of fond memories, but, you know, as a four... And there's always much more room on a couch. Yeah, we can much sit more room. Room. See, look, <laughs> Sit comfortably. I have to ask you, will she be on your Christmas card list? Yeah, I'm not I'm sending sure. any this year. <laughs> I can, every year I send them, I'm dead good. I can't be bothered this year. No, yeah, it's quite hard work, that, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. You haven't started writing them yet, then? No. Oh, no. <laughs> um, the, the fact that you've had two Christmas number ones for the past two years, mm. people are really looking to you to have this one as a Christmas number one in the UK as well, make it a hat trick. Are you optimistic about that? I think, you know, we're really happy with the song. We're really proud of the song. Um, and for us, it's an achievement just to put it out and, you know, people to actually go and buy that. To buy that record is a big thing for us. We'd never assume or, you know, be but that we, optimistic. We hope it would be nice, a nice it, little Christmas nice. present. Yeah, but we never, you know, we, we always go, don't say that, don't say that. Because you it's just it. never know. We're just proud of the song and mm. wherever it goes, it will still be brilliant. It's, it's an achievement to have a number one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, yes. isn't it? Yeah. But then top 20's a bit dodgy. I'm only joking. <laughs> I heard today, actually, Emma, that your uncle's making a bid for uh, child I've stardom. Heard about it. Oh, well. I've heard about, and I haven't heard anything about this. Someone said it on radio is, today. Is Tom a milkman? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, because milkman are doing. But I haven't heard anything about, about it. as well. Is that your brother? <laughs> no, my dad is not. <laughs> so it's your uncle who's a milkman who's doing a charity. I don't know anything about it, so I can't comment. I'm afraid. <laughs> Oh well, he's uh, obviously, I don't think he's got quite such good odds at the bookmakers of being number one, so you're all right. Now, there's, there's been talk as well of you doing a cartoon series or film. How is that in progressing? Ooh. Ooh. It's something that we've always wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like the Jacksons done it, even MC Hammer's done it, and it's, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? And, you know, Disney have approached us, and we're just sort of talking about it at the moment. I think it's quite fun because, you know, we are quite... Animated, yeah, animated, anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be quite funny, especially us two now. We're really animated. <laughs> <laughs> the the idea of people being cartoons representing you. How does that make you feel? Good, because then we don't have to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can a, just a just a do the voiceovers and you can go in, in your pajamas. But it's like the dolls, isn't it? It's just it's flattering. Like if anybody's interested in any kind of Im image of you, it's like wow, can't believe it. It strikes me as a good way to go after doing the, the, the Spice World, the movie, because as you say, you don't have to be in it yourselves. Mm -hmm. Nah. Are you finding that you, you are looking to get more time for yourselves now? I think... Yes and no. You know, as well as, you know, collectively, you know, everybody wants to do things personally and professionally, individually, and, you know, we all respect that and back each other. So we have to give each other freedom to do that. Mm. So, you know, and those who don't want to work can just be lazy. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's a nice time, you know, everything has obviously been quite hectic for us and I think with this, you know, working on the third album thing, I think, you know, we're going to take it, we're going to enjoy the process, we're going to work with new producers and we're going to take it gradually and obviously we've got two babies on the way and, you know, they'll still be able to write in bed and stuff, but it's just, we're going to, you know, take it slow, I think. Yeah, I think a happen. lot of people, you know, they like to say, what's happening now, you know, and it's like, well, you know, we, 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 you know, the last four years we haven't really stopped, yeah. we've achieved a lot and now we want to sit back and, you know, and Chill enjoy a bit. a bit of what we've done, enjoy the time with our families because we've had to spend a lot of time away. Yeah, but we, you know, so there's, there's no rush, so, so just, just, just stop <laughs> all this, you know, so you haven't done anything for two days, so you've broken up then. Oh, the Maroomas must have driven you mad this last year. Sometimes you don't hear, I mean, we haven't heard some of them because we've been on tour, but then when you get back, you hear this story, that story, this story. It's quite mad, some Don't of the things. Don't you find that it goes like that now, because it's happened so many times. You just Everything laugh at we it. do, it's like, they're breaking up. Oh, this, oh, they're breaking up. You know, it's Can't like, keep up. you just give up and just get on with what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. I think probably what people have admired you for as well, you two, is the fact that you were very honest and upfront and came out and said, yeah, we're expecting babies and made it a quite well, we a didn't celebrational actually. They, thing. They investigated our <laughs> lives before yeah. we'd even told some people. Yeah, I think that was a shame, was very nice. wasn't it, for both of us is, you know, for something like, you know, it, it would have been nice for us to be able to say to people and our friends and some of our families, you know, yeah, we're having babies, but unfortunately... That was spoiled and that was taken away from us because it was all over the newspapers. That's how a lot of our friends found out, wasn't it? Rather than us being able to tell people, which was quite sad. A lot of people say that when they're pregnant, they get more creative, like have very vivid dreams and things. Have you oh, been yeah, finding you that? Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. Oh, have there's no end to my dreams. creativity. <laughs> you do. I've and they're inspired us to write yeah. some songs. Yeah. <laughs> Is it going to have any effect on your songwriting, do you think? Definitely, it's it, everything that happens everything in life does. inspires yeah. us, and this is a big part, I think. They're writing songs like the Teletubbies. Yeah. But <laughs> well, we always have done. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we'll have to bring out that one. Uh -oh. Push, uh -oh. baby, push. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the, what thing do you think is going to be the biggest change for you two once you've got the babies? <laughs> I don't think you know until it's there, do you? Can you imagine the girl and you've got a beautiful baby, whatever. <laughs> I think that's hard to, for, the, for them to answer because you just don't know until... I think you probably no. worry a lot, you know. I mean, I know that my mum, you know, really worries if I go out, you know, where I am, who I'm with, am I safe? You know, so, I mean, even now you're always thinking, you know, I hope, I hope I'm looking after it. OK, so, you, you, you know, you worry a lot. I think that's pretty natural. Yeah. Yo, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want So tell me what you want, what you really, really want I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want So tell me what you want, what you really, really want I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna Really, really, really wanna zig a zig If you want my future, forget my past If you wanna get with me, better make it fast Now don't go wasting my precious time Get your act together, we could be just It seems quite happy childhood yourself, though. So you've got some mm. things to give back now, haven't you? Yeah. Do you all, do you feel that you were all very well brought up? Yeah, I do. It's best yeah. I'd say that was my mum like me. <laughs> now I think you know we've been very lucky. We've got very caring and very supportive families, and mm. even like from day one when things weren't. I mean, because now it's you know our success is fantastic, but it was hard at first, and they were like right behind us every step of the way. Lucky. Individually, I'd like to know what do you think it was, I mean, especially with your mothers, I mean, your parents, but your mothers especially, what it was that was the wisest piece of advice they ever gave you? Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I always I did it. it. <laughs> that was mine. Oh, what was mine? And um, I think my mum just said, you know, always be yourself and go for what you believe in, really. Yeah, I think that with me, I just think everything I did was more of a a supportive thing. I, I mean, I always say, you know, when you used to go, when I say I'm going out now, she'd be like, okay, well, if you're going out, here's some money. Here's be back, you know, try and be back by this time. Instead of 
forcing me to do something. You know, she'd just be yeah, very... You've built up a respect. Yeah, it was more of a respect. You? With me and my mum, it's more of a, a friendship thing. It's more of a respect thing. I respect her. Yeah, yeah, I think you can the same, really. I was never really, you know, I've never had particularly pushy parents. They've let me do what I want to do and they've been supportive. You know, but at the end of the day, as soon as I went home, I was me, you know, and I feel a lot of pressure taken off as soon as I I think they the used to say door. to us, can't you be hairdressers? Because my it's mom, easier. <laughs> my mum used to say, why don't you come home and we'll go and buy a new pair of shoes? Yeah, <laughs> come home. <laughs> come home, come home and be sensible, come on. So I've got these questions here that... Um, uh, children would like to know what, what the answers to these are. And, and, and first of all, what were some of the fantasies you had when you were a little girl about being a singer or a star? Oh, actually, I was talking about this earlier. My thing, you know, when you're little, all, you, all I remember doing was signing autographs and being known. You don't actually realize. see all the work Hard that work. you do and all that sort of thing. So that was mine, just to be known and I sign think, autographs. Um, I used to do it. I think, you know, I've probably done it and so many kids do it. It's like, you know, doing your video, pretending you're whoever, you know, in front of the, in front of the mirror with your Making hair brush. Making commercials and stuff. Like, or like, I used to always pretend there was a camera, wherever it was. So like I was in a film or something. So someone would say something, I'd look at the camera and like go, <sighs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> See, mine are going a bit wrong, you see, because I was going to be Margot Fontaine. <laughs> I was going to be a ballet dancer. <gasps> and here I am. <laughs> so yeah, I used to run around with a pair of ballet shoes all the time. And what did you use for microphones? Anything, probably, you could As grab I your hands am, yeah. on. It used to be hair, hair brushes, but I advanced on to, um, you know, the video remote control. <laughs> you know when oh, videos yeah. first come out and the remote controls were really, like, <laughs> slim line? And it was really good. It was like and a really cool red light. Well. Yeah, infrared. <laughs> That's good. Ah. Victoria says that she was going to be a ballerina, but we, were any of you going to be something else? Were you ever going to be anything else in life? I never wanted to be anything else. I remember. Else. I was a good um, thingy. Chip, chippy rapper. Chip chippy rapper. Chip shop. You worked yeah. in a chip shop? Yeah. I used to burn my hands all the time. Oh. Was there a place, a special place that you used to go when you wanted to make believe you were a star? Or play make believe? We used to have a place at the back of where my mum used to live. There's like this big waste ground and there's all allotments and stuff on it and a brook and that. And there was some building must have been knocked down. So there was like a big rectangle of like concrete where the foundations used to be. And it was our stage. And me and my friend used to go and do our Michael Jackson songs on the stage. <laughs> I nutted. <laughs> Over the back of the... Mine was just at school because we had a big room with, you know, full length mirrors all across it. So we used to like... Run across and look at <laughs> do our leaps and stuff. <laughs> mine used when I was at junior school, I used to um, I thought I was from Bucks Fizz, and my mum made me one of those skirts that you know you right, used to right, make in your off. mind. Up, and you used to rip off this skirt, and I used to dance in front of everybody in the playground. They all had to sit there and watch me. <laughs> they had to watch. I think <laughs> I got a lot of my kind of things out of the way by doing, because I used to do dance competitions and things like that, so you can get up on stage from a young age and sing your heart out if you want to and have your tap dance and your ballet dance routine. So I did a lot of that when I was young. I think, I think we all did as well. Yeah. Mm. So that really, yeah, I think from a young age you can decide whether you like it or not. I think it's all to do with the lure of the velvet curtain, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> was there a particular star that you emulated you wanted to be? Yeah, I thought I was Nina Cherry at one point. I was convinced, but then that soon went. <laughs> I always, well, I always think I'm Madonna. <laughs> no, when I was younger, I always used to try and be Madonna. Um, I was Olivia Newton-John from Greece. <laughs> and still is. And still am. <laughs> Who are you, Tom? I think I was just a bit of everybody. Moulded into one. Who did I used to like? Um, I was into Ross. <laughs> Leo Sayer. <laughs> Leo Sayer in my barnet, yeah. <gasps> Did your mum's used to sing to you when you were little? Oh, God, no. No, my oh, mum's got never, a terrible voice. My mum never shuts up singing. <gasps> oh, nursery rhymes and things like that. Yeah. My youngest memory, actually, was I was really, really little and I had some headphones on and I used to dance around the room with my dad because my dad used to be a singer to Stevie Wonder, Sir Duke. And I've got a picture of that when I was really, really little. You look, you look about two or three. Yeah, yeah I also look like a boy. Can... Devil child. Devil child. <laughs>
people's eyes, but like also seeing things through the eyes of a child. What do you think is the most exciting thing about being a Spice Girl? There's lots of things. Travelling's a good one. Yeah. I think yeah, travelling really nice. opens your mind up to different places and people because you never know what to expect when you go to a country like, say for example, Turkey. You don't know the rules or the culture and you have to learn that, otherwise you're disrespectful. So just things like that and how people yeah. live so differently Japan from you and is India amazing. It was, was a big culture. Yeah. Shock. I tell you what else is exciting because, you know, even though, you know, we're celebrities now, but we never think about that. But when we're in <laughs> environments where there's other celebrities, we're like, oh, look, there's there, there's thingy, there's there. So that's exactly. exciting, isn't it? When like you meet famous people. When we meet famous people. Yeah. I think also it's nice to be in a position where, you know, you can sort of give to your family. Yeah, that is That nice. kind of thing. And also, if you feel strongly about something, you can stand up and speak up about it mm. and people listen to you. Yeah. You know, that's a good position to be in. Is it true that you got a, a little love note from Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you'll never know. <laughs> you'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. That was so funny. Was that was the up. biggest wind-up. It was just hilarious. I got this letter off a friend of mine who knew I liked Leonardo DiCaprio, so he signed it like jokingly. And I took it into an interview with me, and the next day it was all over the papers. <laughs> So there, you can just see. He's it's true. Him. You still get linked to them, like if, if he's in the paper, I know. if you're in the paper, they get linked. It's so funny, but that happens a lot. I've never even it? met him. <laughs> well, it's still oh, well. the future. There's yeah, sounds good. Cool. Never, Never know. But there's so much fairy tale about your lives. I mean, Mel, your wedding was like the big fairy tale wedding. Do you do you actually like pinch yourselves and say, are we living in the real world or is this a fairy tale? Well, sometimes you get days where you've when you sit down and think about what you, what's happened to you and what you've done throughout the year or the months, it is like, wow, I've done all that, or I've been there and done this, and and now I'm sitting in front of the fire with my nightie on. It's like, wow, that's a bit weird. My nightie. <laughs> she's got a little now. She's Lady of the Manor. <laughs> it is mad when you think about things. You know, it is amazing what we've been able to achieve and where we've been able to go. Because, I mean, the old, I mean, I was saying the oldest is, what, 25? And that's to have done what we've done. He was 25. You nearly. You're Don't nearly be putting up, yeah. years on me, you. It was what? ever said to me, months? 25. I'm 24. Two months, you'll be 25. I'm, I'm 24 for another two months. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I was saying today, and the oldest is only 23, and she went, 25. I went, oh, my God, 25. Sorry. No offence, she's... Um... Time passes so fast, doesn't it? I know. Don't have time to catch up. The, the, the thing is that you must have, you could have now, everything that you wanted. So I want to know that what you would like for Christmas. You couldn't have everything you wanted. See, I think, yeah, things like you that. You have to earn things, you know, in like life, Christmas I think. presents, you always, you know, I want pyjamas and a nice tracksuit. Oh, mm. nice Bubble baths. Marks yeah. and Sparks knickers. Yeah. That's the thing, I think a lot of people think that all of a sudden, you know, you don't no. want to go for dinner unless you go to a posh, expensive restaurant. Oh, or, I don't. Yeah, no, but, you know, <laughs> I, I do. Like, no, I'm yeah, not. I think there's nice. nothing nicer than staying in oh, see, I'm and a getting real, a takeaway. Oh, you can have well, the best you know. of both worlds. That is the difference. One day you might want to go really mad and really so called pop starish, then the other day you can go really normal and go down the chip it and. You know, have a few beers. It all depends. That, I think that's that, the beauty of it. Yeah, we're really lucky because we've got freedom. You know what I mean? To be able to do that, where a lot of people haven't. I personally like my local pub lunch. They are good pub lunches. Bangers and mash. You're great ambassadors for your country, then, aren't you? I mean, do you feel like that when you go abroad that you are sort of ambassadors? No, of course you don't. <laughs> of course you don't. I, you don't wake up and think, oh, I'm I don't. No, I, I don't think that we do. What is an ambassador? I think Jerry's got an ambassador for our country award, hasn't she? <laughs> How does she wangle that one? one. She's no, it's just someone Charles. that stands up and says, you know, they're sort of like a representation uh, of, of Britain, isn't it? I think you know. I think we're a representation of youth of today, maybe. Yeah, I think you know when we go to places like America, oh, and it's like it's astounding, you know, the success out there, and we can't believe people recognise us. And I think we're very proud to be British and English. You know, wherever we go in the world, and we say, oh. Thank Let's not say that because it's going all over the world. <laughs> no, but we're very proud to be English. I think that's one thing. I think we do get a lot more respect abroad a lot of times than we actually do at home. Yeah. There's no chance. Because at home, I think they need sad. to change the laws a little bit on invasion of privacy. Yeah. And what about the whole sort of um, idea of becoming tax, tax exiles? Does that appeal to you? No. We've done it. No, never again. <laughs> you can't do it anymore, though, can you? Don't do Thank it. Thank God. Don't, don't, don't advise ever, it. Don't do it. Drives you mad. 
You mentioned that, that Jerry's got this sort of ambassadorial role now. Yeah. Uh, do you feel she's taken some of the weight off your shoulders? You don't have to be politically, socially responsible nah. now. I think that stands for what we've achieved as a group, yeah. you know, and without her yeah. being in the group and being with us, then she probably wouldn't have got that award. So that goes to all of us and everybody who's helped us, really, I think. Yeah, definitely, people around us. Yeah, we always say at the end of the day, without each other, we wouldn't be here. And that's the same with Jerry. Without all of us, she wouldn't be doing what she's doing. And we really respect each other yeah. for... Well, she's doing some good work, and you know... She is, a lot of charity stuff. Does she already yeah. moved? <laughs> I love Christmas. <laughs> I think I think we're all doing the sort of you know traditional family, family home, dinner, Christmas I can't dinner. Wait. I can't. I'm <laughs> cooking this year. Everybody's coming round mine. Got on, my aunties and Kit and all my cousins. Yeah. It's really nice. A full house. Nice I'm gonna get to catch up. Marks is pre-cooked yeah, and you just heat it. You guarantee that your Christmas dinner won't burn. Yeah, we keep name dropping Marks and Spencers, don't we? We want loads of free food. I remember, I remember um, peeling sprouts with my nan when I was younger, Christmas Eve. Oh, Gotta put chest, <laughs> chestnuts in your sprouts, it's gorgeous. No, garlic. Garlic. Garlic, a good one. garlic, garlic in your sprouts. Garlic on your Christmas dinner? Chestnuts, yeah. 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 And Sajan onion yeah. and garlic oh, yeah. stuffing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Maybe you can get that posh stuffing at Christmas, can't you? Chestnuts. Like, oh, chestnuts in there. It's brass, killing. Put your maternity one on there. There's advice, you see, sisterly advice. You can always pass it on. So the thing is, you two aren't going to have any room for any Christmas dinner. You'll be full up after two mouthfuls. No, I can eat for England. Mm. I have my moments <laughs> where I can really eat. And do you have New Year's resolutions? Well, I haven't thought of any I do, but yet. I can't tell you. I haven't thought <laughs> of any just yet. Um, I haven't thought of one yet. I think I'm, I'm very impatient. I can really kind of, uh, yeah, can I have this now? You know, one of those. So I want to really sort of like calm down. And sometimes I'm a bit impatient with my mum. And I get really annoyed with myself at that. Because she does everything for me. Absolutely everything. I think um, I might give up smoking because I don't actually smoke anyway. So that would be quite an easy one, wouldn't it? <laughs> the, the thing is, I suppose that you two have got a lot of your year set out anyway because it's going to be full of babies and all the rest of it. You're going to be recording the album, I presume. Have you got a, a starting date for that? I think you know, whenever, we're when we're ready. I, I think I said before, you know, before we're just going to sort of take this one slowly. Take it easy. Me and Mal have been in the studio, you know, writing some stuff. We've been over to New York to see some producers and stuff that we want to work with. So you know, we're getting things on the yeah, road. Yeah, just take it as it comes. Yeah. Really. Can you give people a sort of a taste of if you're going to change at all, mature, and go in any particular direction? Probably will, but I think you never know until the product is signed, sealed, and delivered yeah. before you put a proper thing on it. You don't. They know always the have end. that oh, thing on it anyway, so you know. Yeah, that's you know we, we never know. we never you know go in a certain direction for any reason. It's just we sort of, yeah we just go with the flow however we're feeling that day. Yeah, that's like how the track will turn out. And when would you like to see the album coming out? 
We're not sure yet. We, we don't want to give that don't away because we don't know. We're just, you know, enjoying the process of it all. As you say, you've now got the freedom to be able to sit back and do exactly. things at your own yeah. Yeah. Is it, you know, the important thing at the end of the day, any music that we make, we just want it to be good, top quality music. Our fans have been so supportive over the last four years. And, you know, now's the time we can sit back and really work on it and get some, some more fantastic material yeah. that we're really proud of. And, and the writing side, does that come easily to you all? Some days. Yeah. Some days it does. It depends how you're you feeling, doesn't it? Yeah. Depends whether you're in the mood. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about your image? Is that still just as important to you as it was in the beginning? Mine's, I'm in tents at the moment, so <laughs> mine has dramatically changed from <laughs> crop tops to tents. I think, you know, with image, we've never, you know, tried to portray an image. It's just sort of, this is the way okay. we are, and that is our image. You know, and it's, it's, I think we've been stereotyped through the media and everything, but only because of the way that we are. So it's I, not something we concentrate on. I think that every girl, you know, her wardrobes, the average girl's wardrobe, she's got her posh clothes, her sporty yeah. clothes, her relaxed clothes, her going out clothes. It's like our wardrobe. We yeah. have different things for different moves, just like any girl out there. So that's probably why sometimes we're swapping and changing a lot. Because, like, you do, kind of thing. like to see yourselves as eligible bachelorresses? Not for longer, have Not yet, well, <laughs> I wouldn't tell you that one. Um, yeah, at the moment. Because we're talking about New Year's resolutions, ambitions, you've got an awful lot yeah, on next year. my oh. New Year's resolution. Not, Not mine. Again. <laughs> That'll make it twice, Melanie. Oh dear. <sighs> can cut that out, please. <laughs> that will do. Well, is it, but you're still very much a sort of a, a family between the lot of you, aren't you? Are, are, do, you like <laughs> do you feel like sisters? Do you feel like sisters? Sometimes we do, in a way that, you know, like with sisters, or I've got a sister, or, you know, family, when if you have a row or something, you still love them, you know what I mean? You can have a big blazing now, a big bust yeah, up, in that way, you do. still love them no matter what they do. That's how I, I feel just about that. Like so when are you getting married, Victoria? Um, next summer. Have you got it all planned? Yeah, I'm starting to do it at the moment. So yeah. Starting? Really You've been doing it for the last two years. It, is so <laughs> it takes a long time to find the right place. I've been to see... I did not, mine in like a month. Unless you jam it, you've got one in your garden. Like yeah, you know, unless you've got yeah. a church and a big garden and, and a big house to have it all in. So I've been looking around at lots of different places, but I'm, I'm sort of... I know where it's, what's happening now. And are you getting the time at the moment to go and watch the footy? It's too cold for me. I'm not really into football, really. That's Melanie's, that's Melanie's uh, area, not mine. See, I always feel that if you go and watch a Man United match, you just don't watch the ball at all, you just watch your fiancé. What ball are we talking Sorry. <laughs> that's good, sorry. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't really watch the football match as a whole, no. I don't really understand the rules, and I'm not really that interested in ever learning them. Leave that to Melanie. You're still just as interested as ever in Liverpool, yeah? I am, even though, you know, of late, not it's not been that well. great. Even though you're rubbish, you still like them. <laughs> we beat no. Tottenham, beat them the other day. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we beat the um, Premiership leaders the other day. We're getting back on form. What amazes me is that you're also all finding time to do other things. Um, Mel, you've had your number one single with Miss, Missy Elliott. Is there more coming now? 
Pardon? Is there more to come? Yeah, something I want to dive into. Have you yeah. had any response yet from Prince and Mary J Blige about working with yeah, them? Yeah, I'm going to work with them next year, which is quite nice. I'm going to work with Timberland in a couple of weeks as well. So I'm just kind of slowly doing my own thing and just flitting backwards and forwards and relaxing at the same time. Hmm. And Mel, you're competing in the charts with yourself and Brian Adams. How did that come about? Oh, it was... Um, we met Brian. 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 We met Brian. We met him ages ago at the Top of the Pops and um, we just happened to bump into him again when we were in LA. And uh, he just said, you know, he'd done this track and he thought, like, my voice would work on it. So he asked me to do it and I was, like, really flattered. I couldn't believe it. So I just went along and done it. Oh, and it's a wicked song. And, track yeah, as well. I really I like love it. it. Did you go and record it in Vancouver? No, actually, I'd done the vocals here in London, but we both went over to New York to shoot the video. That's usually what happens, isn't it? You record it separately, but you yeah. have to get together for yeah. the visuals. And then you enjoyed working with him? Yeah, he's a really, really nice guy, a really nice bloke. And then we went on to his house we for dinner, didn't we? We went to lunch. To lunch. <laughs> what, what about you other two? Have you got plans for any collaborations? <laughs> Um, there's a few bits for me coming up, sort of beginning of next year. I'm doing a, um, a production of Sleeping Beauty, which is quite good fun. There's a few famous people in there. So that'll be good fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got ideas, you know, for next year. You know, I'm really interested in doing some more acting. Um, also, you know, you know, business ideas that I've got for myself. So, you know, bits and bits and bobs, you know, I want to... I'm not really sure yet. But I definitely like to carry on mm. acting. Does branching out into other things you think make you stronger as a unit? Definitely. definitely. Yeah, I think so. Support it's, it's nice to have support of other people and know what you sort of want because I'm sure these three girls know what I want to achieve and so they help me along, which is brilliant. Keeps it refreshing, I think, as well. And you you appreciate both things because you know without being in the group you wouldn't be able to go off and do that. But then you can go off and do that and then come back and th think thank you, you know. Nice. I'm the M to the E L B, you know me. I'm the M I S S Y to the E. And I got many flows from overseas. Well, how can you beep beep with no keys? I got spice and tight with my flows. And all my flows been known to throw blows. Well, let me hit this one before I go. Well, I'ma let you go if you say so. Why is it for you? Who me? Yes, me. Yeah, you know I'm a fool. I'm a fool for you. Cause I keep taking you back as though I'm stupid like that Yeah, yeah, you know I'm true But I can't say no And I never said no I can't say no to you Because you treat me whack In fact, I want you back uh, I think I want you back Your love has made a deep impact I know it might sound whack Thing about you being in complete control of your careers now because you don't have a manager does that work i don't think you're ever in control of your career maybe on ideas and on a business level on what we want to do next we're in control but as for how well that does or what direction it takes us in is down to the support of our fans and down to people you know who are interested in the spice girls that's their they control it the viewers what do you think is the most important lesson you've learned over the last sort of three or four years? I think it's probably just to stand up for what you believe in, isn't it? Like every yeah, every step of the way, we've always, you know, we've gone with our gut in instinct, and you know, we've been strong, and it's it's worked. Yeah, we've always gone, you know, with what we want, and you know, if any mistakes are made, then it's yeah. from us. Right. And just one other thing, um, do you think there's only been any one song or one artist in, li in, in your lives that's changed your life and has made you think, yes, that's going to make me a star or that's going to have a huge effect upon me? See, I think that's really hard to say because I think at the end of the day it's down to you, why, if you want to, you know, I wouldn't say I've looked at anybody and thought, yeah, I'm going to be famous because she, you know. I think when you meet people, there's certain people that you meet along this journey that we're on that are in the same industry as you like. For example, when I met Prince, there's certain things that he said to me that made me go, oh, it makes you look at things a little bit differently. 
Because at the end of the day, you know, when you meet other artists and other performers, there is something that joins you together. You don't know what it is, but it's something that joins you together. And it's always nice to get a good conversation out of them kind of people because they're in the same boat you're in. And it's nice to see how they handle it and what they think of being in the public eye and how they kind of perceive the whole thing of fame and, you know, working and that kind of thing. It's, it's, you do get different points of view and sometimes it... It's not what you expect. It's quite like, wow, I didn't think you'd be like that. That is quite nice. Every day. Refreshing. With us, you learn something different yeah. every single day and you're like, mm. you know, so that's quite, that's quite good. And, and do you like the idea of being thought of as, you know, one of the most important phenomenons of the late 20th century? That, that goes like that. <laughs> yeah, how can you sit, you can't sit there and think, hey, yes, yes, actually, I man. fucking am. Right. We fucking hey. are. <laughs> And, and a highlight, I know you've met Mandela, you've met princes. What's been your own personal highlight? I think um, the completion of the World Tour. The World Tour. Yeah. Wembley yeah. Stadium. Doing that. That was, oh, that was amazing. But, you know, loads of stuff like, you know, we were lucky enough um, a couple of weeks ago to win two MTV awards. That was great. You know, no, but actually the World Tour, I think we were really proud because we didn't cancel one show and, you know, and usually there is Something one, happens. someone gets ill or, you know. And we did two of them we're carrying. Pregnant, yeah, as well. So, so. we've done well. I really think that's proud. another thing, you know, personally for me, you know, finding out I was pregnant was a big, big yeah. thing for me, one of the most big important achievement. things. achievement. Oh, that practising paid <laughs> off. <laughs> See? <laughs> This is the Music Factory